Folks, this morning I'm going to do a tutorial about a mistake that I sort of made working with a, a friend of mine. I'm going to go ahead and open up a file here out of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now what I did, I was using Premiere Pro CC and I understood that my friend was probably using the CC version as well, but it turned out he was using CS6. Now, I've joined with this friend to a to do a video for a person. I actually was the, the cameraman on this video and he is an excellent editor of wedding videos. I don't shoot many weddings at all. Uh, I have in the past, but this friend of mine, I'm going to give him a shout out. His name is Steve Skinner with Phase One Video Productions. I'm going to put an annotation on here and uh, tell you about his website, who he is. He's outstanding wedding video producer. He does a lot of other kind of things too, but he's a very good wedding video editor. If you are getting ready to have a wedding in um, North Carolina, uh, Greensboro, and somewhere or anywhere else, I would highly recommend you calling Steve, I'd say within 100 miles of Greensboro, outstanding uh, video editor. Now, what, what I did though, I went and shot this wedding for Steve, and you can see here that I have you know a lot of different video. I use some GoPro Hero 3s, I use some Canon HF G10s, and some HFS 200s. And what I part of the deal, what I told Steve I would do, I would shoot the video, then I would synchronize the video. So what I've very carefully done here is I've synchronized every single track. I have these wedding floors, I have uh, the HFS 200s, and, and everything. And what I've done, I found a musical moment where I uh, where I could start just write on a note, and I synchronized every one of these videos here. They're in green. And then every one of these GoPros, so all together he has nine different tracks that he can go into and he can edit this video. And um, what I'm, of course, I, the re reason I set it up this way, uh, over here in the, in the sequence, is I'll show you what I've done. Um, I actually tried to do something with a, uh, with a song here too, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. But so this, this one is called Wedding Tracks Synced. And then I've made this other one called Weddings Multitrack. And so what I've already done, I, I, hopefully I've done it, I've right-clicked on these, these, uh, um, this sequence where I pulled the synchronized tracks into a sequence here. And hopefully I've already done multi-camera enable, and you can see it is enabled. So I went here and I right-clicked on it, multi-camera enable. And so Steve goes over here and turns this on. Now in CS6, it's in a different place. In CC, you go here, and you go here and you turn on your multi-camera mode. And so hopefully, I'll pull this over in here somewhere, and you'll see he has nine cameras, nine different angles. Let's make it big so you can see it better. I guess I could just click this and do a, uh, click this and do a, a tilt, and you'll see. So here we have nine different angles, all synchronized up very nice and neatly, and all Steve has to do is hit his play button, and then click on this, 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 and it's going to change that in the sequence. It's going to pull it up just like a multi-camera, um, you know, multi-camera sequence typically would. I'm going to till the back out of that. The problem is now, since I did it in CC and he's using CS6, he's unable to open the file. And when he goes to try to open the file, it says that the file's corrupted or damaged. It's really not. It's just that he's trying to open up a newer version. Uh, with, a, with a slightly older version of the software. So what do we do to get my this whole project over to my friend in, in the right way so that he can work on it? Well, uh, there unfortunately, if you go here, I'm going to click back over here in this, in this, this whole thing. I'm going to try to say output or, or save as. Um, there's really no option to save this in, in an older version of Premiere. You go here, you try to, you try to do that. There's no way to do it. Uh, I'm going to cancel that. The, but it turns out I did find a way you can do it. You go to File, you go to Export, and believe it or not, thanks to Apple, <laughs> to the fact for the fact that Apple uh, people do want to send these projects over to Final Cut Pro. Uh, so thankfully there is a competitor for Premiere because Premiere has not put it in here so that you can go backward to like CS5 or CS6. But if you go down here uh, to export and you do Final Cut Pro XML, and let's say this is called Williams Wedding, but I'm going to call it Williams Wedding uh, XML. And um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and save that. 
and says, please check the FCP translation results report saved next XML for problem it prob possible issues encountered during translation. And I know exactly what has caused that to happen because it happened to me yesterday when I first learned how to do this. So I'm going to show you what you do to fix that. Uh, he'll not be able to open that file because there was a, a problem with it, and I'll show you what it was. What I did here, where this Go, the GoPro shots didn't come into play. I didn't start the GoPro until a certain point in the wedding because I was afraid the batteries would run out. So when the wedding party, about three minutes before the wedding party started to come in, I came and I turned these GoPros on. So, of course, they all start at different points. I had to go to one, then the other, then the other, then the other. But I synchronized those up to a, another kind of musical moment. And I added this black video as position so that I wouldn't knock them out of space. I guess I could have locked them down, but I put this black video in here instead. You know, if you use it, if you're a Go or a um, Premiere Pro user, you know that you've got a place where you can import new black video. That's usually right here. So file, uh, new, uh, black video. And you could use the black video as something you either fade to or as a uh, transition, or you can use it just as a spacer. And so what I did, I use it as a spacer. I'm going to delete all these. I know that I happen to also over here on another track, uh, we'll go to it over here. It was in my um, Tony HFG10 wedding. There should be a sequence in here. And like an idiot during the wedding, for some reason, I stopped and started my video several times. So I know I've got black video in here. I'm going to delete that. And it's going to say yes. It's going to delete all the black video. And uh, I use black video for space for there, and I'm going to delete black video here. So if you've got black video in, this will probably not work right. So I'm glad I'm showing you this too. I'm going to say export. Uh, Final Cut Pro XML, we'll call this Williams Wedding XML, no black. And we'll save. And look at that, no problem whatsoever. So what happens uh, when Steve goes to open this? I'm going to say File, Exit. We're going to exit out of here. It's going to say, do I want to save it? I'm going to say no, because I'm going to keep my, my personal copy the same way. But now I'm going to open up Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 because it turns out I still have CS6 on my computer. I could have edited that video in CS6, but I messed up. So now I'm going, I actually tested this last night with a Williams Wedding CS6, but let's do a new project again. So I'm going to do a new project. I'm going to call this W-I-L-L-I-M Williams Wedding uh, XML Test. You can call it anything you want to call it, but I'm just doing this for your uh, example here. So it was shot in 1080p, AVCHD, 30p. Now we should be just fine. I'm going to have a sequence name, 01, which is going to be okay too. We'll go ahead and say all right. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to say over here, i got to make sure this window out here is active. See how the orange is around it? Of course, you know that if you use Premiere Pro, that whatever the orange is around is what's active. You can say file, import. And here we are, Williams Wedding XML No Black, open. And check out what it does. Now what's going to happen, it's going to come up first, since it, uh, it's going to come up not recognizing exactly where that file is, where the all the files are. So it's going to ask me a question, where is the file GoPro 958? And I happen to know it's probably, I'm just going to hold over each one of these files until I find it. So I'm looking up uh, 0958, it says up here. Oh, I see it right here. So right here it is in this first GoPro file. You can see here I see 0958 kind of hanging out here. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it where that is. There's 0958. We'll say select. And watch what happens. It's, it, it actually imported the entire thing. And right now it's, it's going in and it's conforming the video just like it would if I were to start... Uh, you know, if I were to take this over on hard drive to Steve, so I'm going to open this up, and here are all my edits. And so down here is uh, the wedding tracks synced again. Open it up, and voila, there they all are. And uh, now it's showing these little red lines here. Now these are, these are, this is where the audio is currently being rendered out and all for these files. But we should be able to go in here at, at just about any point, and, and it should should have all of our audio there and everything. 
do a little test. It's very quiet in the auditorium at that point. Let's try one over here. And so we can see we have all that here. And then here we have our uh, Wedding Tracks Multi. I'm going to make sure this is a multi-camera enable. So now Steve has, uh, as I told you, it's kind of in a different place where you see your monitor in the CS6 version. So we're going to go here to Window, and we're going to go down to Multi-Camera Monitor. Now they've switched it to somewhere over here in the uh, new version. But so there we see we have uh, all the synchronized uh, wedding parts all back together again where Steve can start editing and so here we have he has his nine different cams and we've done a backward compatible uh, to from CC to CS6 video alright folks hopefully that will help anybody who's trying to do a backward compatible uh, I think it, you can go back probably to at least CS5.5 uh, or maybe 5 in Adobe Premiere from your CC or from your uh, creative or to your Creative Suite six, from your WCC backward. Uh, I'm not said this may be the best way. A little bit disjointed, but hopefully it gets the message across and helps you all out. Be cool. Peace to all. Uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions.